I hear I call this regular meeting of the Danbury Board of Education to order. Will all those in attendance please rise for the Pledge of Allegiance. Pledge of Allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Okay, we're up to recognitions. Uh, first on the recognitions, uh, at our last meeting, we distributed cable boards. Uh, there were two student recipients who were unable to attend and should be or maybe they're here tonight. We have Edgar Pierre and Molly Henning. Are either one of those two here? Edgar? Okay, please come forward. School superintendents and the Western Connecticut Superintendents Association honored students on May 10th at Westcott. Students were invited tonight to be recognized by the board. Uh, from Rogers Park is Rita Hanna and Justin Tung. Justin, please step forward. Yeah. Oh, this is just the right so you already received a certificate. Come on, uh, come forward. Uh, we congratulate you on all of your efforts. Middle School, Catherine Shannon and Jacob Reich, right here. From Danbury High School, Agnes De Oliveira. Agnes is here. Distinguished Unit Award for 2009-10, the sixth year in a row. Um, before we hand that award out, I was fortunate enough to, end, to attend most of their uh, awards reception at the Amber Room a couple of weeks ago. Uh, and so in addition to the unit being distinguished, I guess one of the reasons why they're so distinguished is that many of their uh, cadets won uh, many individual awards that evening. Um, we're very proud of all of these students who are in the ROTC program. Uh, so can we, just like one to extend congratulations to all the individuals uh, in the program. Uh, but for the unit, we have um, a word I'll read the letter that was received from the Air Force. Congratulations to Air Force Junior ROTC Unit CT-021 at Danbury High School for earning the Distinguished Unit Award for academic year 2009-10. The Distinguished Unit Award recognizes the personal growth and accomplishments of the cadets, the contributions of the instructors as mentors of the cadets, and the support of the school and community. The Distinguished Student Award is limited to the best of the best of our nation's 884 Air Force Junior ROTC units. Please present the enclosed certificate to Danbury High School and the AFJ ROTC instructors and pass along my congratulations on a job well done. Sincerely, Richard Regal, Colonel, U.S. Air Force. So we'd like to call Lieutenant Colonel Holmes. Yeah, Sergeant Vernay. Sergeant Vernay. Yeah. Congratulations. Speakers, please limit their comments to three minutes. Speakers may offer objective comments to school operations and programs that concern them. The board will not permit any expression of personal complaints or defamatory comments about Board of Education personnel and students or against any person connected with the Danbury Public School System. Uh, please remember to sign in if you haven't already done so and you plan to speak. Uh, is there anyone in the first row or second or third? Yes. 
Thanks, Doc. Thank you. Okay, this may seem a little silly, but I'm going to sort of demonstrate from here. Um, I was home sick last week, and so wasn't here, but was watching courtesy of Pat City at home. And there's a couple people that you can hear, and then there's a lot of people that you can't hear um, because of the microphone situation. So, I'm going to commend Mr. Skazafava because every time he spoke, he used his microphone, and it was fabulous. Um, so for somebody who is trying to watch and, and sort of participate because they couldn't be here, it really does make a difference if you speak into the microphone. <laughs> so I know this seems a little ridiculous, but let's use the microphones. No, absolutely not. No, it truly, it, you really notice the difference because, you know, I mean, he's, he's back there in the corner and, you know, there's the noise of the crowd behind him. And, and so, you know, when you use the mics, you really can hear it online. And so. It is a nice service that we have courtesy of Pat City, and no Pat City didn't put me on either. So, thank you. Thank you, Ms. Scott. Thank you, Ms. Scott. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> she had nothing to do with it. <laughs> is there anyone else who wishes to address the hearing this evening? <laughs> Once, twice. Public participation is now closed. Thanks. We'll move on to the consent calendar. The chair seats motion regarding the consent calendar. That the Board of Education approve the items on the consent calendar as recommended 10-91 through 10-96. There is a second. Seconded by Mr. Tamasek. Any discussion? Seeing none, all those in favor, please signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Abstention? Motion carries unanimously. Is there an employee representative here this evening? Seeing none. Student representatives, you see all there. Hello. Hi everyone, I'm Agnes De Oliveira. And this is Jasmine, I'm sorry. Um, basically we just want to review everything that's been going on at Danbury High School. We're wrapping everything up, so the main focus has been on the seniors. Um, this Friday is gonna be our senior prom. Um, this past Wednesday, I believe we got our yearbooks and it's fabulous. I advise you all to see it. It's really great. It's all in color, so that's the first. <laughs> Upcoming, we also have our senior trip, which is on June 11th. Um, we also have senior Where are you going? to the college. Or just, oh, so just I'm sorry. Which college, by the way? We're going to Six Flags, and we're having a party on our field, so it's a dual benefit. Okay. And when is that? That's June 11th. We're also having our senior exams the 14th and 15th and 16th. Big day, so we're all really pumped to finish our exams and get out of school. And our award ceremony is on the 17th, and it's at 6 o'clock. Maybe you guys can stop by, come through and come to we appreciate it. Um, we're all really, all the seniors are looking forward to graduation. Yet again, we just want to enforce how thankful we are for you guys letting us have that day, Jess, and we appreciate your help in that. Thank you. Ms. Thank, you. Yes. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Move on to the superintendent's report, Dr. Pastorelli. Yes. Um, first on the list, we have updating on the construction of Mill Ridge Intermediate. I, um, most of you know, last night the uh, facilities committee met at uh, Mill Ridge and I received a note from the PTO parent, the PTO president, the <coughs> president just before uh, thanking the board for having it down here. We're very appreciative of that. Uh, so uh, kudos to you guys for being down there. And so we were working on the details. We had some input last night, as you know, those of you that were there. We also met with the faculty on Monday and Tuesday. There are some things that we're going to have to modify. Uh, I know Dr. Glass is going to be meeting now with the principals that uh, will be, now we know who's in place there, about exactly what they need interior-wise, some temporary walls put up or something for security and testing. They're going to be working those things out. Um, I saw an email this morning that went to uh, Antonio Adarola from the city requesting uh, if there's any uh, possibility of getting some help uh, in terms of the move to assisting the teachers. So those things are going well. We got some bad news though on the front of supplies. You know, we, we said uh, that we would be able, they're looking at whether we can move all the materials over to our. Uh, King Street, we got, it's hard to get, believe it or not, it's hard to get information from Washington. But 
were getting fits and drabs and you know first it was well we don't know then it was very possible and now it's there's a qualify, qualifying numbers we're still working the other two so uh, i'll keep updating you on that uh, we'll know more um, you know in the next few days on this day um what else is there well, dr Dulewski is uh, finalizing the staffing level you may recall that as uh, someone here had asked dr Dulewski when he was principal over King Street when they made the move there. How did they do it? And uh, he had said to you, know, they just picked up and went over. Well, one of the things that, that we're working on is to, is to figure out how that's all going to happen. I think by the end of the week, you'll have that decision made about uh, how, the, how we're going to do that, that move. So that's why we haven't made uh, public uh, announcements yet. We're still down to about 99, 29% very close to settling in. Uh, Bill, anything else on your structuring that uh, you want to talk to Mike, though? Um, I think you covered everything uh, other than maybe mentioning that we did have an opportunity to go up to King Street and meet with the combined faculties and the administration up there. Uh, they had a number of questions, but uh, far fewer than Mill Ridge because the impact there is lesser, obviously. And, um, Folks saw us in the hallway on the way out and said thank you. They felt that we had addressed all of the concerns that they had. Um, outside of that, we're, things are proceeding along well the timeline that we've established, and we don't have a concern at this point about not being able to meet any of the deadlines. It's the only concern that's out there right now, which we're working on, it, is the materials issue with, with uh, the from Washington. Um, just to give you a, a quick synopsis of that. In order to be declared a school-wide Title I program, you must have a poverty index of 40%. When we did the math, we came out with 38%. So we're very, very close to it, but you have to hit 40 or above. There's another option, which is known as a school-wide, I'm sorry, which is targeted assistance, which we don't want to do. In targeted assistance, you actually identify the youngsters who will get the services, which means you label kids and say, many ways that you come from poverty, you don't. You get services, you don't. That's not what we want to do, obviously. We've talked about that before. So we're just trying to continue to work through to see if we can um, uh, legally hit that 40% threshold. We're trying to find all the, the opportunities that we have to do that. Is that, uh, is that based on the school lunch? Uh, the, uh, the free and reduced free lunch. Free and reduced lunch account, oh, yes. Okay. They give us a little margin there. It used to be October 1 only. They've opened it, but as I said, we're, we're close, but not, we have to get it right So, uh, anything else on that? Bob, uh, Elio, anything? Okay. I, I noticed today you closed the loop of meeting with the nurses uh, coming up with a schedule, uh, and we'll be communicating that with uh, uh, Jim Maloney regarding uh, the staffing there. So, you know, those things are coming together. I don't know if the board has any questions. Celebration of Danbury Arts. We had coda, which is a musical term. Coda is an Italian term for tap, the end. And uh, so the culminating activity at West Con they had Saturday was uh, celebration of the arts. We had, uh, this time we had industrial technology there. We had performing arts, we had visual arts. And we started this last year to celebrate the things that we think are as important in the community. So you imagine how difficult it was this year going through this budget thinking about reducing our, when in fact we should be celebrating things that we do. And uh, the teachers uh, put it together, they volunteered, they did it all. Westcon worked with us for the use of facilities. Kind of, uh, just, uh, just a tremendous operation. In fact, um, I went into the industrial technology piece and they had this machine and it was a um, it was an automatic meatball hero maker. And the guy said, well, you know, we worked on, it's supposed to be done in two weeks, we worked on it last night, and Altman was one of the guys who worked on it. And he's been to the board a few times. They used, it works with, uh, it works with uh, ping pong balls, but not with meatballs here. So by the end of the night, they got working with meatballs, making meatball sandwiches. So, uh, I mean, it's just one example. And, um, uh, talked about June engineering team jets as a wonderful project for them to look forward to in the future. So the whole day was a wonderful day. So it was from 
including 9 to 5 o'clock. Uh, Nellie May Grant Opportunity, uh, we've been working with grants and um, actually Anne Reed is taking leadership on this one, putting it together. This is with the secondary reform work that we're doing. Um, the grant will be going in for approximately $300,000 to the planning grant. $200,000 on a planning grant. We were selected, uh, I think I've mentioned it to you, this Nellie May organization looked at Danbury along with this reform group about three years ago. And uh, most recently with the work that's being done there, Bob and Rossi have done some work with them. They've come back and they've selected about five uh, cities throughout the United States. One Danbury is one of them, Connecticut here, to do some work in uh, high school reform because of the work that we've been doing with our outcome achievement plan and uh, the, uh, the other initiatives going on at the high school. Uh, if we're successful in getting that, uh, as I said, we'll have $200,000 because we're concerned about the training and the planning and that's what we'll be doing. It will give way, if we're successful, for two grantees out of the five to receive a $5 million grant. And that money will be used for secondary. So, and that's something that we need very, very good. So that's going in, and hopefully we'll get that first phase, and, and then try to get it. I mean, you don't get the Super Bowl, we can get this. Right? Retirements. The reason why this is on here, I just want to make you aware. We don't have any retirements. We're not having the big thing in high school. You know, there's the Kabasha and all of those kind of celebrations. So I think we're going to have people come to award me. That's why I'm asking now and recognizing the retirees. Is that what we're doing? That would be my recommendation. Okay. I just want to make sure we're all, I know everybody might be expecting that. But so that's what we're doing. That's good. Thank you. I just want to clarify it. Um, staffing. You're going to, you know, every year, um, I don't care what we do, uh, it's going to be problematic with growth. Some of the elementary staffing, you can do some shifting. And uh, Bob and Bill uh, have been working with the principals ever since we put this budget together, which you know we tried to refine the numbers. Um, you know, the numbers are growing a little bit in some areas and some are kind of declining, so uh, we're watching that closely. The middle school looks okay. There may be some growth over Rogers Park and Arab Arnold. The high school is just finishing their scheduling and course selection work. Uh, it looks up there, you know, if we wanted to reduce three, we might only be able to reduce two instead of three. Um, you know, we're just going to have to watch it and, and put a stop on parts of the budget to do that. We can't, you know, we can't run classes with 28, 29 kids in the elementary. And certainly if there are requirements of the high school and the special needs kids need things or their courses are taken for graduation, we're kind of obligated to, uh, to do those things. So uh, I just want to give you the heads up. We may be, you know, in one or two positions there. So, um, as we go through here, I'll know more and more. Uh, but other than that, you know, you're staffing 10,000 kids, so it's remarkable getting that close to this point. August 1st is a, is a real telltale sign as well, but uh, right now the high school is having that pressure. It looks like instead of 3 2. And what's the elementary look like, Bill? Any deviations? It's that, kind of you suspected? right now. We may, I think, have to add maybe one or two. Too early to tell. Some of the kindergarten homes are still too far off to double sure. And I think legitimately so, you need to say, where are you going to get the money from? You, you, you're as knowledgeable as I am about this budget. We're just going to have to go in and buy the, the, you know, just less on the supply side. That's why we want to work real hard on this, uh, the, the materials from Bell Ridge to uh, King Street. So those are challenges that we're faced with. Um, my guess is that you're going to start hearing that we need more support staff in some of the schools. I'm not saying it's not accurate, but Joyce has worked very hard to find an equitable distribution. And so, you know, we're trying to keep an eye on that, but that looks pretty solid. It's really in the, in the schools where we may need some addition. But I did want to update you on that. Thank you. Who wants to action items? Chair seeks a motion regarding action item A. That the Board of Education accept the April 2010 operating results analysis of the General Fund 10 97. Second by Ms. Alberts. Discussion is along. Thank you. For the month of April 2010, the district expenses totaled $7,145,311. For 
for fiscal year to date expenditure value of seventy nine million seven hundred fifty seven thousand four hundred thirteen dollars approximately seventy one percent general fund total budget as of april 30 2010 the district carried encumbrances of four million six hundred and twenty thousand dollars year to date expenditures and encumbrances totaling approximately seventy five percent of the fiscal year to date any questions for Mr. Long? Mr. Tavis? Uh, yes, um, I asked the uh, uh, item uh, 117. I know this is 122.8% off of this. Yes. The comment number 117 is identified by Mr. Tabersack as a teaching part time long term account. Current year uh, appropriation is $150,000. As of June 30th, we have expended 184,000, approximately 23 percent over the current year appropriation. The account 117 long-term subs uh, carries the cost of substitutes on a long-term basis uh, to cover teachers that are out for either intermediate or long-term care. Uh, perhaps the teacher is out on uh, uh, intermediate uh, illness uh, or perhaps <coughs> Also, be on a maternity leave, and we are required obviously to cover the long term sub. And the threshold for the long term activity of the leave commences with the 40th day, a higher rate as compared to the per day rate of substitutes. Last year, Mr. Tabazak, we expended approximately $230,000. The current budget at 184, as of April 30th, the 10 months to the fiscal year. Approximately eighteen thousand. We will we'll more than likely finish this year at approximately two hundred twenty thousand. Now that two hundred twenty thousand compared to the teachers' account for approximately forty forty five million dollars base salary represents about half of a percent. So the long term account is an overage account, a matching account with the teacher account, which allows for an over expenditure of approximately half a percent. So it is uh, in line with uh, prior year or past year expenditures. Unfortunately, this year with zero percent allocation, this makes it a lower rate of 150,000. And for next year, we have it uh, at a level of 180,000 dollars next year. Okay, so there's a good chance that might go over. Too. Yes, there's a very good chance it might go over as well too. We tried to manage and control the expense uh, going back approximately three, four fiscal years ago. The account that uh, the expenditure was probably closer to four to five hundred thousand. Last year, Any other questions? Uh, the question I have uh, for you is: uh, Do we have resolution yet on the six hundred thousand from the sale of the Roberts Avenue building? Um, we do not. Uh, Dr. Pasquarella, approximately a month or so ago, if not longer, uh, had sent a request over to uh, the city uh, requesting that the item be uh, put for the Common Council for their, it was their April 1st meeting, April, actually April 6th meeting. Uh, Dr. South, you can elaborate the response we received by the city, from the city. They were investigating the, um, the methodology of how we should be getting home. I don't know if you question whether or not I don't know how that was going to happen. What I said to Elio is that, you know, we can't be in a deficit, so we do have three and a half, three point two million dollars, three point two million dollars that we are holding. Remember the reimbursement ECS, the pass through. That the worst case scenario is that you know when we pass through the money, I was wondering conversations early on, pass through minus six hundred thousand dollars balance of legacy. So that money is on account. That's, that's there. So we're still waiting on that, and I'm not sure if the mechanics of it. But that's what I was told. The concern I have is that there's one council meeting left in our fiscal year, and that I'm sure the agenda for that meeting, which is next week, has been set or almost set. So if it's not there without this <coughs> accounting maneuver, uh, the, the question I would have is with two months left, you know, we're 71% spent. Do you have an opinion as to whether we're headed towards an operating deficit or a surplus? Even without the 600000 uh, Likely is a deficit without the $600,000. I have always planned on operating with the $600,000 as a supplement for the education. Uh, we communicated that 
have many locations, not just at least in this three, four weeks ago, to the city that uh, we have operating or continue to operate from the city to receive the $600,000. A little more than $3.2 million. Um, if you'll remember, recall, the state of Connecticut received uh, era stabilization dollars this year. Um, and at one point, it appeared that the state legislature or the governor's office uh, would move to reduce the LDAs or the municipalities. PCS, education cost share. Uh, Danbury share with, with a reduction, a proposed reduction would have amounted to possibly $3.2 million. So the state of Connecticut took the $3.2 million, $2 million passed it on to the LEA directly to the school district, and will reduce the city's PCS funding by the equivalent value of $3.2 million. Um, in an agreement uh, with the city, I have covered that $3.2 million and have promised that I would not uh, overextend this year's budget, obviously. If we take a look at an accounting paper today, we are not only operate at the 111 or 112 million dollar mark, we operate at 115 million, but I haven't covered a few million dollars on it. And as Dr. Sal alluded to earlier, the, the current plan is that in the absence of, uh, of a supplemental, uh, and I believe Dr. Sal communicated as well to the city or to the mayors, that we will continue to operate working with the premise that will receive the $600,000 and not do a supplemental that has a reduction will be cost to reimburse the city out of $3.2 million. That's going to be a return of about $3.6 million. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Starting part time, come 179. Uh, I believe the total expenditure is assigned for uh, high school, debt high school students that are uh, assigned to various types of projects. We created a very nominal rate, a fraction of the uh, minimum wage per se. It's a work study program, and it's a program that's been in place about for special ed. For special ed, I can I'm sorry, Joyce, if I may, for the chair. Joyce, is it, is it limited to? High school students only? Some eighth grade middle school students. Thank you. It's a vocational program. Yes. Any further? Seeing none, all those in favor of action item A, please signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Extension. The motion carries unanimously. Thank you. Chair seeks a motion regarding action item B. That the Board of Education accept the April 2010 operating results analysis of grants and projects. Dash 10 dash 98. Is there a second? Second to Mr. Tabersack. Mr. Walker. Thank you. For the month of April 2010, the district expended $1,464,757 of the currently reported uh, fiscal year grants and federal projects for a fiscal year day expenditure value of $13,657,342. Approximate value 52% of grants and federal projects. Any questions for Mr. Walker? 
Seeing none, all those in favor of action item B, please signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Abstention. Motion carries unanimously. Are there any discussions this evening? One thing I'd like to mention before we anyone else speaks. Uh, there was an article, I don't know if it was in the paper or just online, uh, regarding a Freedom of Information Act request. So one word of caution uh, before anyone wishes to speak about that is that as a judiciary body, it's quite possible that um, any labor type of grievances we could come before the board in detail. So uh, any comments we might make may sully that process. Um, so that, that's just a word of caution. It's been icy. Um, I just in regards to the FOI, go ahead. In regards to the FOI request from Councilman Saudi, I think this is uh, Tom's third FOI request in the last 12 months, if I'm not mistaken. And I'm just curious to know, because it, we do have costs associated with that, I would like to request through the chair that uh, for this latest FOI request, a statement be put together by Sal and Elio to include any legal fees that we may incur, or any cost at all in putting together this FOI request. So I'm curious to see how much it will cost the taxpayers. So, we have consensus that the past all. Is there any objection to that? No, 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 no. Except to go on record to say that uh, uh, where the information came from is uh, not justifiable. That's not the way I operate for the administration. Anyone that criticized the board or uh, our scenarios, uh, there wasn't any effort made to investigate or uh, to uh, discipline or to confront. Um, today, I did bring the IT department in and ask them straight up, has anyone requested anything from you? Absolutely not. There are two individuals that can do it. Uh, I spoke to Mr. Bryce and Kenny in charge of those. There is not. So uh, I will respond in time because. So FOI is legitimate, um, but uh, you know I, I took a personal front to that information being shared in such a way that um, side folks people have to ask me, which that's his position. Do I understand? But, uh, there is there is there is any uh, merit to it. It's quite personal just to me. But I will go on. What I what I told the reporters today is that we should be about the youngsters and figuring how we can work together and not apart. And you know anything that occurs from that mission is not. Uh, but hopefully we'll put this behind us moving forward. One thing I would say is I would encourage people, if they do have agreements about any issue, the proper channel is through their respective union. Uh, that, that is the channel that uh, people need to address like and believe this is through. So I highly encourage anyone with a perceived uh, injustice to go through their union representatives. And we should expect a, a brief statement on the expenses associated with complying with the request. Yeah, I'm, I'm working on it as a uh, city with Thomas. Any other discussion on that? Mr. Scott, Mr. Scott. Chairman, I had to hope that after the investigation is over, or whatever, or Mr. Scott is investigating, which is his, his call anybody can ask for a lot of information. I, I mean, I've been part of that pretty when I was in the account uh, clerk's office for many years, for two years. Um, there was a lot of that whole lot but um, that's fine. But I would like, and this is over, this is over, and Mr. Sai's investigation is over, that he give us an answer one way or another of exactly what he found, if he found it. I doubt if he did, and I'm, and I'm sorry this even happened, but that we do need an answer. We should have an answer of some sort. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I just sort of want to speak about the meeting that this appropriate last night that we had at Hill Ridge. Um, I think we had a good time. Uh, I think the questions were uh, valid questions. Uh, two things sort of uh, disturbed me, and uh, we can talk about that um, at, a, at a board meeting, at, at a workshop. Um, one comment that was made uh, by a board member that I thought was inappropriate at that meeting. But I'll move on from that because I believe between Mill Ridge and King Street and the transfer of children, it's all about the children. One, two things hit me as I came out to do a, uh, doing a uh, conversation with two people. 
and I don't know exactly if it's going on. I don't know um, will it happen, but I think it's something that we need to look at. And there was two sides of this. King Street kids think that Middle Ridge kids are bullies. Middle Ridge kids think King Street kids are bullies. So I guess what my question would be, how can you bring those children together before we get into the initial uh, move or whatever to make sure that everything goes right and we don't have a whole lot of dismissive or children uh, being punished for inappropriate action. That was three things that I heard when I came out of the DMC. So I, my main concern is we know what's going to happen. Let's do it and without the children, let's make sure that the kids up at Middle Ridge respect the kids at King Street and the kids at King Street respect the kids at Middle Ridge. So I, I guess what I'm looking for is some type of open communication maybe between those parents and those students that are being transferred. Okay. Those are great points, Mrs. Cooper. Um, we're already on top of them. Uh, we're setting up a series of meetings. Uh, more than likely, it will be there will be two meetings, maybe three, devoted to uh, one meeting devoted to how do we integrate the two student populations so that we form a unified population, you know, promoting mutual respect and appreciation, and downplaying differences. And we have um, strong belief that that will happen once kids get together. We seem to know that sometimes it's the adults that are more problematic than the kids. So our second um, overarching goal is how do we get the adult community to come together in a way that's um, as productive as possible. And to do that, a second meeting is going to be set up to talk about how do we integrate the faculty members. Um, not that they don't play well in the sandbox, they will, of course. But the idea about how do you take one uh, faculty team in the Ridge and bring them to a brand new campus and help them feel comfortable coming into a new setting. And how do you take a, another faculty team, the King Street team, who now have a whole bunch of brand new neighbors coming in and help them uh, feel comfortable. But in informal conversations, primarily with the King Street team, they were very amenable and open and said, we really want to make this happen and do a good job with them. And the third um, idea around the adults is around the parent populations. And it was really encouraging last night to have two presidents, one from the original, one from King Street, kind of extend the hands of friendship and say, we will work together on this. So uh, I've already sent an email, Dr. Cronin, Mr. Scales, Schreiner, Mrs. Bacon, uh, others, uh, Mr. Rodriguez, etc. Uh, we'll be setting up a series of meetings. Uh, those three items I just mentioned are the heart of the initial meetings. We're also going to be talking about the logistical pieces with materials, all the way from inventory and packing to distribution and implementation of those, and then any other associated issues that uh, need to be addressed in as seamless a manner as possible. But I promise you that. If it will help, I'll be more than happy to give you the, the schedule of the meetings. And board members are always welcome to attend. You know, so we'll extend that, that invitation to you. Okay. Sure. One thing I would mention is that I, I was at the King Street PTO meeting last month. I know there was an invitation that was going to be sent to Mill Ridge parents to attend their June PTO meeting. They were invited to the, the King Street community. They did have a, a social event at the high school in which Mill Ridge the New Orleans community was invited to, and I attended that. There were some New Orleans uh, students, students, parents, and teachers there. Um, but I think you know, perhaps maybe we can use the June PTO meeting, and, and maybe it can be coordinated between the PTOs to have some type of activity accompany that, so that children will give the children another opportunity uh, to mix before the school year starts. I think that's fine. Greg, Scales, and Linda from Kingston, Bill, he's going to call you tomorrow. They, they're planning a Saturday um, get a business there and he was asking for transportation to come and do that. So they're already having, they already have some things going. Joyce? Can you school person? That's an office. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Mrs. Cooper's comments and questions um, caused me to 
to realize that we have done some things within people's services to go up against this too. As all of you know, we have school psychologists and social workers that are assigned to each of our elementary schools. And the staffing ratios are based on the size of the school, the needs of the school, um, special education IEPs, things of that nature. But specifically for next year, as we looked at the transition of youngsters from Mill Ridge to King Street, we did weight services up against King Street schools just to help with that. So, for example, those are the folks that not only address individual incidents of bullying, but they also work with classroom teachers to train them to recognize bullying or any other type of peer relationships and other kinds of issues, as well as going into classrooms and working with groups of students. So what you're going to see next year at King Street School is not just a proportional ratio of more services, but even something on top of that for next year to help with that transition. So that is something that we plan for in my department. Mr. Janelli is absent. Mr. Fazio is absent. Mr. Tapasak, policy. 
Okay, we're waiting for the high school to uh, be ready uh, with their report on course waiting and the new requirements and so forth. We're going to maybe, hopefully, at the beginning of June, they'll be ready. They said they needed all of May to finish up. Um, and we'll follow through on this and we'll see. Okay, I'll ask Dr. Glass on that. Uh, I just, to do so. Uh, the high school. Okay, the course uh, waiting and the new course requirements. They said they needed to the end of May to finish what they were doing. So uh, maybe you can see where we would. We would like to at least get this done before we recess for the summer. At least I would. I, I hate to leave anything hanging. I think they've almost come to con uh, completion on that. There's been a slight glitch, and that is Dr. Marvin's baby has chicken pox. She was home uh, with a couple of personal days dealing with that. Um, but the last time we spoke, uh, they indicated that they were pretty much coming to conclusion on it. So I'll follow up tomorrow. I'll send an email tonight, and I'll follow up on it tomorrow. Thank you. Superintendent evaluation is one better. Yes, we are almost completed. We'll have a June meeting with the chair's discretion whenever you're Chair seeks a motion to go into executive session. 
we find this is cool because you're second. Second to Mr. Gale, all those in favor, please say the front and say aye. Aye. Opposed? Abstention. We have an executive session. We'll take a five minute recess. Thank you. Sign offs. Um, there's also a phase two part of that.